Since we already reviewed the general characteristics of the epithelia and learned about the covering epithelia in the first histology ABC video, in this histology ABC video we'll talk about the secretory epithelia and glands. Welcome to a brand new class on DeanMD, where you can learn everything related about the basic sciences of medical knowledge and apply it to patient care in the future or right now. Secretory epithelial cells can synthesize, store and release different products such as proteins, lipids and carbohydrates, or even just secrete water and electrolytes like the sweat glands do. Secretory cells can be found as forming part of a covering epithelium that is usually a simple columnar, cuboidal or even a pseudostratified epithelia. These scattered secretory cells are often called unicellular glands, for example, goblet cells that can be found on the small intestine or respiratory covering epithelia are in charge of secreting lubricant mucus. As we can see here, goblet cells always have a nucleus close to the vasal pole, abundant rough endoplasmic reticulum and a large Golgi apparatus. And located at the apical pole, its cytoplasm is filled with large secretory granules filled with mucin. This mucin is a protein that gets spelled into the lumen and gets hydrated turning into mucus. On conventional histologic preparations, the secretory granules appear white, as we can see right here. On the other hand, when multiple secretory cells come together, they can create multicellular glands. These glands in the fetus actually develop from cells in the covering epithelium. These epithelial cells start to proliferate and grow towards the connective tissue below the basement membrane. If the original connection with the covering epithelium remains, these cells will transform into the epithelial cells lining the ducts of the gland now known as an exocrine gland, as we can see right here. Exo means outside. The secretions of these glands are carried outside to the lumen via ducts. If the original connection is lost, as we can see here, the gland doesn't develop ducts, and this gland is known as an endocrine gland. Endo meaning inside. The secretion of these glands are absorbed by the thin walled capillaries that surround them. So remember, the covering epithelia is responsible for the creation of both exocrine and endocrine glands. The group of epithelial secretory cells in a gland, meaning the functional component of the gland, is called the parenchyma, while the surrounding connective tissue that acts as a support is called the stroma. So first we're going to talk about the endocrine glands. The secretory cells of endocrine glands are in charge of producing hormones that travel in the blood and cause a reaction on target cells that can be far away or close to the endocrine gland. The secretory cells of these glands can be arranged in two different ways. Number one, in irregular cords. These cords surround the capillaries and their products get absorbed as soon as they are secreted. Or number two, as rounded follicles. These follicles form a kind of circle creating a lumen for temporary storage of the secretory product, so it can be absorbed later by the capillaries. Endocrine glands are composed mostly by parenchyma, meaning secretory cells and minimal connective tissue or stroma. On the other hand, exocrine glands are composed by both parenchyma and stroma. The parenchyma of the gland is divided into two portions. The secretory portion, also called the acinus, formed by secretory epithelial cells, and the conducting portion, meaning the ducts, made of non-secretory epithelial cells. The stroma of the gland starts to divide the gland into lobules by the creation of partitions called septa. Multiple lobules together form lobes, and all of the lobes of the gland are externally surrounded by stroma, forming the capsule of the exocrine gland. But how can we classify these exocrine glands? They can be classified in three different ways. Number one, by the structure, the shape of the secretory portion and the branches of the ducts. Number two, by its mode of secretion, as merocrine, apocrine, and holocrine. And number three, by the type of secretion, as serous, mucus, or seromucus. We'll begin with the first classification, the structure. Based on the branching of the ducts, an exocrine gland can be classified as either simple, meaning that the ducts don't branch, or compound, meaning that the ducts have two or more branches. 
These names of simple or compound are combined with the shape of the secretory portion. Tubular means that it has an elongated secretory portion, while acinar, also known as alveolar, has a rounded sac-like secretory portions. These portions can be branched, however, this doesn't influence the classification as simple or compound. The only thing that matters if it's branched for the name of the gland is if its stocked portion, its conducting portion, is branched or not. Therefore, simple glands can be simple tubular, simple branch tubular, meaning that the secretory portion is the one that is branching. Remember, the conducting portion is not branching if we call it simple. Coil tubular, simple acinar, also known as simple alveolar, and simple branch alveolar, meaning that the secretory alveolar portion is the one that is branching. So again, notice here that even though some have branch secretory portions, all these glands have only one duct with no branches, therefore they are all simple glands. On the other hand, compound glands can be compound tubular, Compound acinar, also known as compound alveolar. Compound tubuloacinar, that is a mixture of the previous two. Notice here that there are multiple branch ducts, hence the name of compound glands. Now, talking about the second form of classification, based on the secretion mechanism, exocrine glands can be classified as merocrine secretion. It's the most common type of secretion. It uses vesicles or secretory granules containing proteins or glycoproteins. These vesicles travel towards the apical pole of the cell and fuse with the cell membrane, liberating the contents to the exterior of the cell. This process is known as exocytosis. For example, salivary glands have merocrine secretion. Apocrine secretion involves the secretion of the apical portion of the cell, which contains the secretory portion. However, the vasal portion of the cell that contains the nucleus remains intact. To remember this, remember that the A of apocrine is related to its secretion of the apical pole of the cell. Examples of these glands are mammary glands and sweat glands in axillary and genital areas. These glands release fatty secretions that local bacteria break down, which causes body odor. Holocrine secretion, on the other hand, is where cells start to accumulate product and enlarge until the cell explodes, causing the release of the product as well as the whole cell. To remember, you can use the letter of holocrine, H-O-L, that secretes the whole cell. Examples of glands that have this secretion are sebaceous glands. These glands are the primary structure involved in acne vulgaris. During puberty, there is an increase in the hormone testosterone, which leads to an excessive holocrine secretion of the sebaceous glands, causing a blockage in the gland ducts. This blockage leads to the proliferation of bacteria that normally lives in the skin, called Propionobacterium acnes. This bacterium produces a localized inflammation that is known as acne. And the final classification based on the type of secretion of exocrine glands, they can be divided into serous. These glands are made of serous cells that produce a watery protein secretion that usually contains enzymes. They are filled with apical secretory granules. These cells stain intensely with basophilic or acidophilic stains. The apical portion is usually eosinophilic because of the granules, while the vasal portion is basophilic because of the abundant rough endoplasmic reticulum and holds an spherical nucleus. On the other hand, mucus glands are glands that secrete mucus and are made up of mucus cells. These cells can be either found alone, as goblet cells that we already talked about, or can be grouped as mucus glands, in salivary glands for example. They secrete mucin, which contains highly viscous glycoproteins to protect and lubricate the surfaces. However, the normal coloring of emetoxylene eosin dissolves the mucus droplets of the cell cytoplasm so it looks pale and vacuolated. The nucleus is pushed to the base of the cell and looks flattened as the cell fills with mucus droplets. These droplets are also secreted via exocytosis. So as you can see, both serous and mucus cells and glands have merocrine type of secretion. And finally, serous mucus secretion is a mixture of the previous two with a watery mucus and enzymatic secretion as well. 
And to finish up, in addition to secretory cells, epithelia of exocrine glands like sweat, lacrimal, salivary, and mammary glands also have in the basal pole myoepithelial cells. These are contractile cells that have long processes that hug the gland cells like an octopus. When these cells contract, the secretory products are propelled from the secretory portion to the conducting portion, meaning the ducts, so it can be excreted. And with this, we finish up the second histology ABC video. Remember to stay tuned for more histology videos. Coming soon, we're going to talk about Barrett esophagus and how histological knowledge is important in diagnosing this disease. If you haven't done so already, remember to check out Smart Doctor, a new channel where I will talk about the clinical sciences of medicine. If you are interested in videos that talk about the diagnosis, clinical features and treatment of the different type of diseases, please consider subscribing to this new channel. If you would like to read more about the topics discussed in this video, I'll put my reference down below in the description. Also, if you have any questions, please don't doubt to write it in the comment section. Before you do, make sure that your question wasn't asked already. If it has, please give that question a like and the three questions with the most likes will be answered in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And remember, it's always for our patients. If you like this video and the content I make, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. With your help, I'm sure we can get free medical content to every corner of this world.